against all odds. That's our story. 10 years ago, they thought we'd never make it. Five years ago, they thought our company would never last. Three years ago, they started paying attention. And now we're right where we belong, in your hands. This is a story about love, about passion, and hard work. Believe in your dreams because you can accomplish anything if you pursue it. So we want to take you on this journey to show you the love, the art form, and the culture of cigar making. There's many out there that are trying to put the cigar industry out of business. Anti-smoking laws, high taxation, but really, truly, this is an art form that has transcended over generations. The amount of work that goes into making cigars, 300 different hands touch the tobacco along the way. By the time you plant a ceiling in the ground, from the time you get a cigar in the box is almost four to five years. From the farm, the curing, the fermentation, the construction, the quality control, making boxes, putting bands on, cellophane, everything is done by hand. It truly takes a lot of work and a lot of love. And we're proud to be able to share our cigars with you because I promise you, nobody's gonna work harder to make a better cigar than we do. This is our family. Come share our journey, come with us, and enjoy the great pleasures of life. Truly wonderful cigars. And I promise you, when you light up a Rocky Patel Premium Cigar, it's gonna deliver everything that you asked for. Come on in, and let's take a walk. Welcome to heaven. This is where it all starts. Beautiful sun-grown tobacco. As we know, there are two types of tobacco. There's shade-grown tobacco and sun-grown tobacco. Shade-grown is grown under cheesecloth. It blocks out about 65% of the ultraviolet rays, and the plants get up to about eight and a half, nine feet tall. You get very thin, light tobacco, usually best used for wrapper. Sun-grown tobacco delivers the flavor, the character, the richness, all the flavor that you need in a great cigar. Every single farm is measured for soil samples. We actually make sure that we have the right amount of magnesium, potassium, boron, nitrogen, so that the plants are healthy. And when you get a healthy plant and you actually take it to the curing barn and the proper fermentation, then the rollers get a chance to make a wonderful cigar with a great blend. This is where the birthplace of tobacco all begins, the nursery. Here, under beautiful shade, you have all these seedlings that are growing. Each one of these little squares has these seeds that have been transplanted. You usually have five or six germinations per square. Hard labor, meticulous work, they'll pull out all the germinations and only leave the healthy plant there. It will take about 45 days for the plant to grow once the plant has been grown, it will then be transplanted into the farms. So this is important, a lot of care, just like taking care of a young child. Birthplace of tobacco, healthy nursery, healthy farm. So after 45 days of tender, loving care and a lot of nurturing, finally, we have beautiful, healthy tobacco plants. They're ready to be transplanted into the field. The way you can tell the tobacco is ready as you see the beautiful root system and the tobacco plant has completely gotten hold and surrounded the soil. Before the plant is transplanted in the fields, there's one final process. We actually shock these leaves. Take a lawnmower, the lawnmower just slices through the top layers of the leaf and that shocks the plant, it makes it fight it makes it stronger, so when it goes out in the sunlight, it's fighting and it's ready to go. Look at this gorgeous little plant. This little baby is gonna mature into a five and a half, six foot tall, gorgeous tobacco plant. Now we're examining a nice, healthy plant. A normal sun-grown tobacco plant is usually broken down into three sections. The top of the tobacco plant has the heaviest leaves and texture and it also delivers the most flavor and character in a cigar. The top third section is called lijero. 
The middle third of the tobacco plant is more medium bodied in texture and also medium bodied in flavor. That part is called viso. The bottom of the tobacco plant, which has the thinnest leaves, also has the lightest character of tobacco and is called seco. So in order for us to make a perfect consistent cigar, I break down the plant into characteristics that are more defined. I break the plant down into what we consider primings. Hence, starting at the bottom of the plant, what I would do before these leaves would be harvested, I would call this the first priming. These two leaves would be the second priming, third priming, fourth priming, fifth priming, sixth priming, seventh priming, and ultimately the eighth priming. So when I'm making a blend, I'll say I want the eighth priming from this particular farm in Hamastran. I may use the seventh priming from a farm in Esteli, Nicaragua. I may use the sixth priming from a farm in Costa Rica. This way, every single cigar is guaranteed to have the same consistency. It's gonna have the same tobacco from the same farm, from the same part of the tobacco plant. And you're gonna ensure that the flavor characteristic remains consistent in every single cigar. The other thing you get from this tobacco plant is wrapper, binder, and filler. Many people think that wrapper, binder, and filler comes from separate plants. That is not true. This particular plant will deliver all those three leaves. You will have in the top third, the middle third, and the bottom third, wrapper, binder, and filler. Wrapper is that particular leaf that is completely clean. After it goes into the curing barn, it's gonna get a beautiful brown texture. After fermentation, it's gonna be nice and golden, rich, dark brown, much like this Decade Cigar. Binder is that particular leaf that may have a few spots on it, like here, okay? So it may have a few spots on it. It's gonna go under the wrapper and that will be binder. If it has holes in the leaf, that particular leaf will be called filler. And there's a big difference because a completely clean, cl clean leaf that's used for wrapper may cost 20 to $50 a pound. Binder may cost about $9 a pound. Filler, which might have some holes in it, will cost about $5 a pound. So you will have wrapper, binder, and filler from all three sections of the plant, or like I said earlier, all the primings. Once they start harvesting the tobacco, and we start harvesting by primings, those primings are color coded. And you'll see as we go into the curing barn that there are different colored ribbons used. So for example, the first priming may use a yellow ribbon, and then we'll move on to a red ribbon, a blue ribbon. So this ensures that we categorize the leaves right out of the field, into the curing, and onto the fermentation. So now you've seen the tobacco plant, we're gonna take you to the curing barns, so let's go. Okay, we're in the curing barn now, and as you saw on the farm, you saw the truck being loaded with fresh tobacco leaves. These leaves have just been harvested, second priming. As I pointed out to you in the farm, there's a yellow ribbon. The yellow ribbon classifies the priming so that from the time the tobacco comes to the curing barn to the time the tobacco goes into fermentation, we know that it's the second priming because of the yellow ribbon. The tobacco is classified that way, will stay that way. It will be resorted, retouched to make sure that classification is consistent all the way till that blend is made. So this ensures that every time we make a blend, again, the tobacco comes from the same plant, from the same farm with the same fertilization. Look how quick she is. She's taking the stems of two of the tobacco leaves and she's got a thin sewing needle and she's kind of making sure that they're both tugged tight and then hung on this bamboo pole that we see here to her right. These poles will eventually be hung throughout the barn. The goal of curing is to take the humidity out throughout the leaf. This is a very important process because if this is not controlled and done properly, you're gonna have issues with water stains and other impurities on the leaf. You want to get as much wrapper as possible from the tobacco. In order to get wrapper, the leaf has to be completely clean, perfect golden brown color. This green leaf will eventually start drying out and you'll get a yellow mutated color and finally sell, settle down to a nice golden brown. First, the small veins will be dried out and then extreme heat will be applied to dry out the mid -rape. Back in the old days, they used to fire gas heaters horizontally and vertically through the whole barn. 
They would fire the gas heaters at night to bring up the temperature at a high temperature, and then during the day they would open up the vents on the barns to allow the air passage to move through to work the tobacco. This was done in the old days. The Placencias have now got modern technology involved and they're getting a lot more wrapper. You're gonna see a new system called Calfrista. Under the Calfrista system, there are vent ducts that run through the bottom and top of the barn. They're controlled digitally through temperature, humidity, thermostat to give you the most yield of a wrapper. It's an amazing process. We're gonna walk you through the Calfrista now. Let's go over and see the wonderful modern technology of curing tobacco. So we just got done looking at the tobacco that was fresh from the farms going to the curing barn. This tobacco has now been here for 13 days. The tobacco is starting to lose its moisture. You can see the veins on the side are starting to release the moisture. Some brown spots have set in. This was wonderful, bright and green. Now it's got that yellow and brown hue to it. Eventually, when all the moisture has gone through the midrib and the side veins, this beautiful leaf will have a nice golden brown color beautiful oily wrapper. All this tobacco, the way it's actually being cured, is gonna be delicious, gorgeous wrapper. So now we're gonna go look at tobacco that's 40 days old, and you'll see that this tobacco, after 40 days of curing, is absolutely gorgeous, perfect to use for wrapper. All right, we're in the wonderful world of the Calfrista now. This is the ultimate curing barn. As you can see, there are ventilation ducts that travel throughout the barn on the bottom and the top, and it allows you to digitally control the temperature and humidity. You can see in the other barns, we saw the green leaves, the fresh leaves drying, and now under extreme humidity and temperature, the veins are starting to dry on the leaves, and then the midrib is still left. Once these veins completely dry on the leaf, they'll take the temperature up even higher and the humidity higher to dry the midrib. Eventually, this leaf will be perfectly golden and brown in color, resulting in a gorgeous wrapper. Usually, with sun-grown tobacco, you only get about 20 to 25% wrapper. Shade-grown tobacco, which is grown under cheesecloth, blocks out the ultraviolet rays, delivers almost 50, 55% wrapper. With this new system of Calfrista, where we can control the temperature and humidity to give a nice even leaf and get more wrapper on the sun-grown tobacco, we're getting almost 55 to 60% wrapper, and on the shade grade, almost 75 to 80% wrapper. And wrapper is something that there's a big shortage of in our industry. Gorgeous leaves, healthy, nice color, even. You don't get any rain spots on them. Beautiful. Look at this beautiful Carojo wrapper. Gorgeous curing, perfect curing here. Calfrista, look at the oils. Even pigmentation, nice oils, even color, beautiful texture. This is what happens when you take time with tobacco. Perfectly controlled climate, temperature and humidity, and time. And end result is this gorgeous golden brown wrapper that's gonna go on one of these Edge cigars. I hope I get one. Once the tobacco leaves the curing barn, it arrives here, where the tobacco will be sorted and selected for quality and texture. In texture, you're looking for ligeros, visos, and secos, and identifying the thickness of the tobacco. In quality, you're determining which particular leaf will be wrapper, binder, or filler. It's a special process and takes a great eye. All this tobacco came from one bale of Ligero. In that same bale, you have extraordinary thickness from the eighth priming. This is a seventh priming, almost similar, but just not as thick. Sixth priming, you can tell and you can see it's definitely thinner. And fifth priming, which is right around here, separated which is even thinner. Again, all classified as ligero, but different degrees and variations of strength. If one roller were to get the leaves from this pile and the other roller were to get the leaves from any one of these piles, in the same blend, you'd have inconsistency in the character and strength of the cigar. So to ensure that we have consistency in the blend, 
When I make a blend, it'll be the eighth priming from a particular farm in Costa Rica, seventh priming from a particular farm in Esteli, sixth priming from a particular farm in Hamastron. This way it guarantees that every cigar, again, has the same leaf from the same tobacco plant, from the same farm. The other thing it helps us ensure, we can actually ferment the tobacco separately by primings. Because if I took the whole bale of Lijero and fermented together, the eighth priming would be under fermented and the sixth priming would get over fermented. All this tobacco, it's a little dry. We're gonna show you, we have a state of the art system, how we add moisture back to the tobacco to condition it for fermentation. All right, so here we have a well cured bale that is coming from the Nestor Placencia family. This tobacco has already been fermented. It's packed at about 12% humidity, very, very dry. So it doesn't break, but it's still not supple enough to work with. So what we're doing at this stage is we're adding moisture to the tobacco. We have a state-of-the-art system, 1,000 parts of water per second, very clean, refined water without any impurities. Many factories will actually take the tobacco, they'll take a hand and dunk it in a tank of water. You get too much water retention into the tobacco and that ends up leaving black tips in the fermentation of the tobacco. This system evenly distributes the moisture on the tobacco so you get a lot more wrapper, you don't get water stains, and the tobacco, when it's being fermented, is very clean and beautiful. Again, we're touching, feeling, working, Another step towards the 300 different hands touching the tobacco to ensure you are getting a great quality cigar. We feel that we can take this tobacco and push it even further by adding about six months to a year of fermentation. Okay, now we're in the critical key component for making a premium Rocky Patel cigar the fermentation department. What you're doing when you're fermenting tobacco is you're getting rid of all the nutrients, all the fertilizer that the tobacco plant absorbed. The nitrogen, the boron, potassium, magnesium. So all that wonderful fertilization to make that plant strong and healthy, now we're gonna clean the plant so you get the clean tobacco flavor. So here you have a 2,500 pound pilone. So you take all this pressure, you add moisture to the tobacco, and that breaks down the biological decomposition of the tobacco. It can take six months for Seiko, take 18 months for Ligero, 12 months for Viso. Most of this tobacco has already been fermented. But here, we really like to push the tobacco. You'll notice with all my cigars, the key elements are a rich, complex flavor, but the cigars are elegant and well-balanced. You can smoke the cigars all the way to the end. They never get harsh, they never get bitter. Sometimes you can put the cigars down for five, 10 minutes, pick them back up, and they stay lit. And that's because of the fermentation process and the amount we push the tobacco. Every 10 days, the pile will be rotated, top to bottom, bottom to top, inside out, outside in. The reason being, the center of the pile, especially in the middle of the pile, gets very, very warm. In fact, when we pull out a hand of tobacco from the pilone, it will be really warm, and you'll smell it like a fresh loaf of bread, like a cookie. I mean, you get that caramel, you get that chocolate, you get that nuttiness. The tobacco will finally be ready when the temperature stops rising. But you really have to touch the tobacco, talk the tobacco, smoke the tobacco, feel the tobacco. That's when you know the fermentation process is perfect. And at any one time, a wrapper leaf might not be ready from Sumatra. We may have a Lijero or an 8 priming from Hamastran or Esteli that needs more time. Hence, we have to wait. I've stopped production on decade before for three months, Old World Reserve for two or three months. Right now, the Corojo needs more fermentation. We will not rush the cigars until the tobacco is perfectly cured, perfectly fermented, because once you have great tobacco coming out of here and you have great craftsmanship in the factory, you're gonna get a good quality cigar. And that's what we do. What most companies do when a bale of tobacco arrives at their factory is strip the tobacco. Once you strip the tobacco, you have to use all the tobacco 
for any blend in a particular cigar. We have a great long-standing relationship with one of the greatest growers of Cuban seed tobacco in the world, the Placencia family. The Placencia family for generations has been growing tobacco in Nicaragua, in Honduras, Costa Rica, and many parts of Central America. As a result of this, we have tobaccos, Ecuador tobacco, Sumatra seed, Ecuador tobacco, Connecticut seed, Costa Rican tobacco, Habano seed, Costa Rican tobacco, Mexican seed, Nicaraguan tobacco from Jalapa, from Esteli, Honduran tobacco from Hamistran, Olancho, St. Augustine, and Talanga. We have African Cameroon tobacco. We have tobacco Dominican Alor, Dominican Peloto. We have tobaccos from Peru, from Colombia, from Panama, and many other parts of the world. Due to this special relationship, we can specifically pick the selected special tobaccos that go into the Rocky Patel Premium Cigars. We sort that tobacco and then we strip only that particular tobacco that are going to be required for our specific blends. We are not forced to use all the tobacco for our blends and it is very important because we are stripping only the selected special leaves that are going to be used on our great cigars. This is one of our many sorting departments. In this particular department, all the wrapper that's gonna go on the production floor is getting ready to be cured. In order to make a perfect cigar, the wrapper has to be supple. If it's too dry, it's gonna break and disintegrate. So here, they're applying the moisture to the wrapper. They're also sorting the wrapper for color because we have a very strict standard for each blend for each brand of cigar. So it's not too light, it's not too dark. For example, it's a natural product. Maduros can be really dark, they can be lighter. If you don't get great wrapper and you don't have great sorting here, you're gonna have problems in manufacturing down the line and you're gonna get assorted colors, wrong sizes, spots on the cigar. So this is very important, it's a lot of work. This is what we're doing here right now to guarantee the aesthetic beauty of a perfect cigar. It's a little thin, it needs a little more. Little more. Yeah. Look at this wonderful leaf. It's just been conditioned. They've got the right amount of moisture added to it, so it's supple and easy to work with. It takes years and years of natural fermentation to get a beautiful Maduro wrapper like this because the Maduro wrapper comes from the top part of the tobacco plant. You use the heaviest leaf and you put it through extra fermentation till the sugars crystallize and they come to the top. Absolutely gorgeous. Nice and oily, beautiful. Probably end up on the edge or the old world reserve. Enjoy. Welcome to the Salon Parlor of Rocky Patel Premium Cigars. When you come into this room, you wanna make sure that you absolutely have the best materials for the bunchers and rollers to work in. Because if you don't have great tobacco, well, you're not gonna come out with great cigars. So we make sure that the materials coming into this room are absolutely perfect, perfectly fermented, and of top great quality. So once we're here, we're surrounded in this floor by about 240 teams. They work in teams. One person is a buncher, the second person actually puts the wrapper on the cigar. The buncher is very, very important in the construction of a great cigar. He literally has to take each leaf, place it in his hand, and fold it in an accordion fashion, much like this. And the leaves will go one on top of the other. And you really have to slow down and create this bunch in your hand and you can see it creates air passages through the cigar so the cigar can breathe properly. You wanna make sure you have plenty of tobacco so they're not soft spots. The cigar feels firm and solid in your hand. At the same time, it should drop beautifully and burn beautifully. So this is a very key and important element of the construction of our cigar. They're trained, they usually make the same type of cigar with the same size because they can feel the tobaccos in their hand. They create that raw bunch in their hand. We make sure that we limit 
are bunchers to only making 200 to 250 cigars a day. Because if they rush through this process, you'll get cigars that are booked, cigars that you can't draw on, cigars that will burn unevenly, and cigars that might run on you. Once that raw bunch is created, then it will be placed into one of these molds. The cigar goes into the press. The press is between two people. And every 15 minutes, they'll give the cigar a quarter turn, like so, and repress it till it's perfect. Once you get a nice, firm cigar, then the cigars will be taken over to the draw test machine. Every single cigar we make is tested for draw. What happens with the draw test machine, there's a vacuum that pulls on the top end of the cigar and actually measures the amount of air flowing through the cigar. If the cigar is too loose or if the cigar is too tight, we won't allow the wrapper to be put on the cigar. The cigar will be rejected. This way, it guarantees a perfect draw for every cigar. A great torcedor has years of skilled experience in rolling a perfect cigar. They are equally as important as the buncher to make sure you have a beautifully finished cigar. The wrapper should be rolled nice and firm on the cigar. The caps should be beautifully and evenly rolled. On the case of a regular round cigar, the cap should be evenly distributed, the heads beautifully finished. In the case of a torpedo, they should be finished to a nice point, clean and elegant. Every cigar should be consistent in its aesthetic look, finish, touch and feel. Only years of great training and experience bring a beautiful cigar to life. See, this is masterfully created. Look at this perfect torpedo. Nice, firm wrapper, beautiful sheen on it. Nice, even finish. You can't see where the cap ends on it. It's firm, it's perfect. Tobacco is evenly distributed through the cigar. No soft spots. Looks elegant. Can't wait to cut and light it. Once all 50 cigars have been finished, bunched, and rolled, these beautiful cigars will now be inspected by a specific supervisor. They will touch and feel each cigar to make sure that the caps are perfect, the heads look beautiful, the tobacco is distributed evenly through the center of the cigar, and finally, all 50 cigars will be weighed on a scale, and they should fall within three to five grams of each other to ensure that the right amount of tobacco is placed within the cigars. Now, these cigars will be sent to the quality control room where I will meet you next for final inspection. Welcome to our quality control room. The cigars that you saw being rolled in the salon parlor will come here for final inspection. In this room, every single cigar will be rechecked thoroughly. We're looking to ensure the tobacco is laid evenly throughout the cigar. Each cigar will be felt to make sure there are no soft spots in the cigar. They'll make sure the caps are perfect on the cigar. And finally, the ring gauge and diameter of each cigar will be checked. If for any reason they find a problem of any sort in the construction of the cigar, the cigar will be rejected and it will not be re-rolled. It will be used for short filler. In this room, we want to make sure that the construction of every single cigar made at this factory is absolutely perfect. The job is meticulous, it's tedious, it takes a lot of time, but it guarantees good quality, consistent cigars. These are specially designed racks that we've designed for the Maduro cigar. The Maduro cigar retains a lot of water. We've designed these racks so that these cigars dry evenly. It protects the shape of the cigar. If we put them in our normal bundles, the weight of the cigar will make the shape of these cigars inconsistent. That's why we put them on these racks. They dry evenly and you're always gonna have a perfect cigar. This is the aging room. I love the smell of this room. Smell of cigars, tobacco aging, cedar. It's nice and cool in here. We actually keep the cigars at about 65 degree temperature, 70% humidity, four to six months of aging. The Maduros take much longer because they retain some water, but this is where they're stored. The babies sleep here. And after six months, we pack them for your enjoyment. Welcome to our packaging department. This is a final stage where the cigars will be packed 
for your enjoyment. Every cigar that comes into the packaging department has to be perfect and flawless in construction or it will not be received here. So what they're doing here, they're gonna check the cigars to make sure the head is perfect, the cap's perfect, they're flawless, clean, and they fit within the narrow color standards that I've set. Those cigars that fit those standards will be allowed to be packed. Any cigar that's a little lighter or darker than the standard I've set will become a factory select. A cigar that is two-tone in color or may have some spots will become a second. Handmade cigars are a natural product. Hence, you get a lot of different gradations of color when it comes to cigars, especially the darker cigars of the Maduros. Here's a prime example. This is a standard I've set for a perfect cigar that would be packed in a box. This particular cigar, very clean, very flawless, but again, when you compare, it's just a shade lighter. This will not be allowed to be packed and it will be factory select. It just doesn't fit our tight standard. It's not the same rich color that I'm seeking for this particular brand. So this cigar will be rejected. But you know, it's, it's, it's troubling because these are clean. If I were to take this color and pack them all in a box, nobody would know. But I like that rich decadent color. And hence we have only about 45 to 50% of our cigars that are allowed to be packed. It's a lot of work to enjoy that great quality cigar. An often asked question is, why and how do you make a box press cigar? I personally love box press cigars because really what you're doing is you're taking a round cigar and then you're pressing it. They're very hard to make because you have to gauge the draw. Because now, the cigar is being pressed, there's less air through the tobacco, so really what the cigar does it delivers a rich, concentrated flavor, but a really nice, cool smoke. When you're done with the box press cigar, they're gorgeous, look like little pieces of chocolate. Absolutely beautiful. But they start out round. They go onto a little tray like this. You have to have individual cedar dividers, because if you were to put the cigars right next to each other, they would lose the form and you get deformed shapes. This way, every single cigar has a uniform shape to it when it's pressed. Then the tray goes into these master presses. They're pressed there for four days, then the cigar is turned, pressed for another four days, after which time it goes into this master carton. And it goes into the aging room for four, six, sometimes eight months if they're Maduros. If you've never tried a box press cigar, try it. They're tough to make, but I promise you, they'll deliver. The cigars have now been sorted by color, and they're specifically selected for packing. So at this workstation, each single cigar is taken by hand and the band individually applied. It's meticulous work, takes a lot of time to pack these cigars. When we put all the cigars together, Gorgeous, uniform, each one is even, color is perfect. Wow, they look delicious. Over here, once the cigar have been banded, they're re-examined one at a time to make sure and ensure they're absolutely perfect before the cellophane is applied to them. The cellophane will be put on each cigar individually. The cigars will be packed into a box. The cigars then go over to the next workstation where a supervisor will actually take the cigars back out of the boxes, re-inspect each cigar, and then, if they are perfect, put them back in the box and finally place her stamp of approval to guarantee that this box is finally ready for shipping. So my friends, here I am all alone at the factory. So many people have worked so hard and spent so many hours to deliver a great quality cigar. You've seen the farming, the curing, the fermentation, the sorting, and finally, the production and the packaging of cigars. Labor intensive, lots of passion. You know, the art form of cigar making is something that is unique in this world. So here today, my journey ends and yours begins. I promise you, nobody works harder to make you a great quality cigar than we do. 
So from our family to yours, enjoy.